What's up, everyone? This is KTD Sports. I'm Bill White. With me, as always, Devin Pickney. Uh, no Jimmy this oh, week. Jimmy is uh, possibly lost in a volcano in Hawaii. Um, so yeah, true tragedy. He couldn't make it. Yeah. Hopefully he's. Um, hopefully he's just not. You know, he made it on a hike. But either way, no Jim this he week. He always comes back. Yeah. It's just a regular <laughs> vacation for Jimmy, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, so this is uh, the draft. We're looking forward to the NFL draft, and we went yes, over sir. receivers last week. This week, we are going to be going over quarterbacks, the top five quarterbacks in this year's uh, class. Um, and, yeah, so I guess we'll just get right into it then, right? We got, uh, we got Kenny Pickett, right? Heisman finalist from last year. From uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, yeah, so he's six foot three. He ran a four seven three forty yard dash, and uh, a lot hand. of people say that he's NFL ready. <laughs> he's ready to go. You know what I mean? That's what I've been hearing. Bill is like for the teams that I guess are more competitive and are looking for the long term investment in the quarterback. Mm -hmm. That he's the most plug and play. I there's an argue for his ceiling. But I think he has the highest floor, like potentially, yeah. of this class. Yeah. Just because of the pro style offense, and he makes like NFL reads, like his quick decisions. Yeah. He's also not afraid to throw the ball, which I like. Which That's I like true. a lot. Which is good for the NFL. That's the way the NFL is now. You know, it means pass heavy, big yards. And uh, he's accurate. He's a good decision maker. Like I say, he's not afraid to throw it. He throws the deep ball, puts it on a fucking dime. You know what I mean? Bread it's basket. Deep. <laughs> right in the basket. Like he pulls it right in. And uh, there's a, uh, what's it called? Pittsburgh. There's Jordan Addison. He's a really good receiver that Pickett had this year. Uh, I'm honestly not sure if he's in the draft or not this year. I'm going to look that up real quick as we're talking about it. But um, I've heard. He's good. Like, well, you know what I mean? A lot of times when a good when there's a good quarterback in the draft, look out for the receivers in that draft too. Because a lot of times the receivers are also really good. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's sometimes it correlates to like having a stud receiver is oh okay. It's definitely a big part. Like Justin Fields definitely had some stud receivers back in the day. When yeah. <laughs> I say back in the day as in two years ago. But playing with Olave and the likes. Yep, exactly. Um, and Jamison Williams. Remember we talked about that last last week. Jamison Williams was Jamison Williams was on uh, Ohio State with Ohio with Justin Fields. Yes. <clears throat> Side note: I when, hope he goes um, to the Chiefs. But <laughs> Jamison Williams. Yes. You want to go to the Chiefs? Yes, just because you hate. Man. Do you hate the Patriots? <laughs> If I don't feel like, well, I don't know because he went to he went to Bama after, so like maybe the saving connection with Bill. So I hope yeah, that's an influence for them to go that way. But I feel like they struck out on the receiver. So like last time they got Nikhil Harry was their last first round receiver. Yeah, he's also the only first round receiver <clears throat> Bills are drafted. Yeah, they don't do that. So I, yeah. I'm not surprised. Like, that's an anomaly over the past 20, 21 years. Yeah, it's the same with, like, like how many, like, first-round running backs has been drafted two? Like, Lawrence Maroney and Sony Michelle, neither one of them are any yeah. good. Yeah. So I feel like we're going to get, like, a defensive lineman. <laughs> probably. Well, Patriots, yeah, they probably will. I always look forward to it being, like, I'm always, like, trying to – because what sucks about the draft – I love the draft. What sucks with the draft is that it's on so late on like Thursday night, yeah. Friday, whatever. And um, I got work in the morning, you know what I mean? So I got fired. I can't stay. Patriots are always drafting yeah. 32. So I fight. I try my best <laughs> to stay awake. I finally come to the Patriots pick, and all of a sudden it changes to another team. It's really. Like, oh my God. <clears throat> last trade one on the first round. It's horrible. The last pick 32 I waited for was the Lamar Jackson. I was like, it's perfect. We're gonna get Lamar Jackson. Yeah. And they trade it to Baltimore, and then all of a sudden he they get him. Yeah. I was like, I was amazed the whole time he lasted that long. Why not? 
Like how... But um, but I love the draft. That's what I'm talking about the draft. But yes, yeah, so well, Kenny Pickett. Uh, he also has the it factor. He has like, I mean, he was a Heisman finalist last year. He's been to the been to New mm-hmm. York City. You know what I mean? But like, um, I've heard he's the most. What I've accurate. seen and what I've heard about him is that he's like a good leader, like natural born leader. Has the it factor? Has like the that personality, you know what I mean? He's not like timid, not timid person, which you need to be, you know what I mean, for my last NFL. Yeah, I guess the one can, <clears throat> one of the concerns would be the small hands, just because I don't know how big that is I mean, as far as factoring in. I don't know either. But I mean, I would imagine having bigger <clears throat> hands would be better, but I don't know if it's that detrimental. I mean, the dude, like we're saying, he's made it this far. He went D1 to Pittsburgh. Went to the fucking Heisen Trophy, didn't win it, but you know what I mean. No, did he win it? No, the dude from Alabama, the Alabama quarterback. Um, but you know what I mean. His hands are fine. He can, he can, he knows what he's 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 figured it out. You know. I think uh, like Jared Goff was the only or the closest to that hand size. Yeah. So they were saying it doesn't correlate with success. Like, I don't know how big Kyle Murray's hands are, but yeah, like, I, I can't mean, imagine they're crazy. No, like, same with, like, Drew Brees. <laughs> like, how big, like, you know, it's not like. It's been done before. It's been done. He's figured it out. But, uh, yeah, but I really do like Kenny Pickett, and I think he's going to be a good pro. He's, Was a lot of people are saying, what I think I'm seeing, he's going to be the first quarterback taken, possibly. But who knows in this draft? There's a lot of change and a lot of – there's already a lot of change in position, teams drafting where, you know. But um, what do you think? Who do you think is going to take uh, Kenny Pickett? Well, I want to say Pittsburgh, but I'm going to mention them later with another quarterback. But I think, like, Carolina, that might be a reach at six, but if they could find a team that possibly want to move down, like I don't know if a quarterback's going to go in the top six man. just because of the team's big boards. Like when you go, when you don't go by position and you just list the player, I think mm-hmm. you list maybe 10 guys before you list a quarterback. Yeah. Just because. Like the Aiden Hutchinson's, Thibodeau's going to be nasty. Like Evan yeah. Neal, Kyle Hamilton, all the receivers I didn't even get to. Olave. Yeah, all the guys. Uh, Jameson, the might, receivers. Jameson might fall because of the injury. Mm-hmm. But all the guys. I just yeah. named like eight guys. And there's yeah, two more receivers I'm missing. Yeah, it's like also – did you sound up? He said Trevon right, Walker. He's, he's supposed to go high. I'm not Gardner I'm seeing here. Yeah, Evan Trevon Neal, Walker. Like said. When we get to the trench guys, I think there was rumor – Jacksonville was rumored they liked him number one. I've seen that a few places. Because That's not bad. i see seen here – I'm looking at a mock draft here. Um, it's Walter Football. Who I, I like them. I'm seeing the Carolina at number six, like you are saying, but I see them taking uh, – the next guy we're going to talk about, Malik Willis. Um, but, yeah, I see what you mean. But, I mean, Atlanta's at – uh, I'm sorry, at eight. They're looking – Seattle's mm. at nine. You know? I think with Atlanta, I think they're just going to take their punches with Mariota for a year. I yeah, I think, think they're going to pass on a quarterback cause... this year. Mary go for – I mean, I'm seeing here that it was like I can – Akwanu, I'm just butchered that name, the offensive mm-hmm. tackle from uh, NC State. So that might be the direction they're going to head and yeah, try to go for a, uh, uh, the, some protection up front, you know what I mean? That's probably the number one need is offensive line because yeah. Matt Ryan has been put on his can for all these years. Matt Ryan yeah. is probably so happy he's got Quentin Nelson <laughs> in front of him now. You know what I mean? He's never True. had anything like this before. His life's changing. <laughs> But you mentioned Malik Willis, so I figure we'll spin it there. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get a combine on him because I think it said he didn't do the the uh, athleticism, <clears throat> the athleticism drills, yep. because just the sheer talent he is. Like when you watch the film, it's similar to Lamar Jackson. Like he didn't run a forty. Because you already know, just watching the game film, you can assess like a. Jackson's like a 4-3, but 
Malik's probably a four four, like in that range. Yeah. But just his there's plenty of clips that you've seen in his combine of making throws on the run, drop back. Yeah. Like, he's he also like he takes off a lot, but he also makes good reads like progressing down the field. And he probably yeah. has one of the strongest arms, if not probably the strongest arm in the class. Yeah. Um, there, Malik Willis, like his, his highlight, he's got great highlights. Like we were saying, running, running, making the throws on the run, mm. doing that. The problem with Malik Willis I have is like when I'm watching it, it was like if his first option isn't there, he's running. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's... And then when it's, he, he'll project his throws too. So and it he needs to learn to throw the ball away too, but he doesn't do that at all. Instead, he makes erratic throws. You yeah, know what I mean? Like early Russell Wilson, like yeah, the, he always before he learned <clears throat> to make a better decision with the ball. He always yeah. wanted to do scramble around the other side. Now yeah, your offensive linemen up. don't know where you're at. Exactly. Where to block. And it's like, yeah, the receivers don't know where to you, run. You run into trouble doing that. So Absolutely. That is, that is a concern. Yeah. But I do think Malik Willis has a lot of talent. I do. But I think he is needs to be in a position where he needs to sit behind a guy for a year and, like, learn, learn to like, get coached up. He definitely needs better coaching. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being at Liberty, I'm sure they have great coaches and everything, but it's not like he was at Alabama or Ohio State. Yeah, it wasn't an SEC have. program. Exactly. So. And this even to learn the um, because like guess even Liberty, like I don't know who the who how they play, but it's not like we said, it's not Georgia. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he's fast, but the game is also fast. So he, there needs to be an adjustment for him too. He has got a lot of potential, but I do think he's a step behind. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Where that's what I'm saying though, if you put him in a good position with a good coach and a good system and a good line and a good quarter, another good quarterback there, that's willing to like, you know, at least someone that's like made some like minimal success at the least in the league. Yeah. Like don't put him behind Carson Wentz or don't put him behind like I mean they did it. Jimmy G is obviously not a good example because he's there, but if he goes to Seattle, Jimmy G went to a Super Bowl. You know, he's he's he ain't played with Brady. You know, he's he's not a bad guy. As far as I don't know if he's the mentor to Lance, like throughout that situation, I think he might have been like protecting his job type deal. Yeah, like I never feel like Brady mentored Jimmy G too much. Like I think Jimmy G had to absorb, or just by paying attention and like actively trying to be there because I feel like Brady was just like, he was doing his thug fizzle, you know, he was yeah. staying on top of his game. Brady liked to mentor <laughs> the guys that weren't as good. The better yeah. you were, the less Brady liked it. You he know what I mean? Special teams probably the most time. Like, yeah. But um, either when Malik Willis, though, but yeah, like I said, uh, but he's good though. He's good. He's very mobile. He's very a, fast. I think the like, highest ceiling of the group. Definitely yeah. a high ceiling. But he's definitely if, a risk pick. He's definitely yeah, a project, in my opinion. Um, I don't think he's NFL ready yet. But Patrick Mahomes sat behind Alex Smith for a year. You know what I mean? Like, Rodgers played behind Favre. There's been a lot of examples of yeah, players. Yeah, situations. Yeah, it's not a common thing. That's it's done supposed to be drafted. Like, Mahomes went 10th overall, whatever it was. You know what I mean? So it's because hmm. even Alex Smith, at least he's made playoff runs. Like oh, Alex past. Smith, yeah, yeah. Brought the Chiefs to the playoffs that year. Who, like, so who do you think should take Malik Willis? What like what what system would fit Malik Willis the best? Oh, well, I think it would be cool to see him in Atlanta. I think I like that. Not the immediate fit. Because obviously they need to get some receivers in there, and work on. They're gonna work on the offensive line this year for sure. like every mock has them taking like a tackle, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So. But that would be exciting, though. That would be that's exciting. like a twenty twenty. Stay behind Mariota and then have him with Pitts the next year. 
Yeah, hopefully have them, get some more weapons. Get some receivers in the latter rounds, like second and beyond. Cordero Patterson, he's very quarterback friendly. You know what I mean? Yeah. He makes your job easy. If you need to dump down a hand off, he's got you. He's there. <laughs> so if they can get line and receivers this year, and then also yeah. if they got – well, if they got him and then did that. And yeah, then you have – he's not going to play Atlanta this year, also theoretically. Atlanta defense, too. Atlanta sucks. Yeah. Everywhere. There's a lot of you holes. Know? That's why they got a good tight end. That's why I said I would that's like it. him to go there, but it's unrealistic because of well, they're not ready to start that clock yet. Yeah. Like they're still building. So yeah. Or they were tearing down most recently. So mm -hmm. they're not quite a glove fit. So what 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 do you think is a good fit? Well, Good fit. I don't. I like hit Finn for the Commanders. I just wish they didn't have Carson Wentz. But disregarding that, if they, yeah. the Wentz thing doesn't work out, which I don't, I'm not optimistic. <laughs> but because they they have weapons, they have like, did they sign? I think they still have Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Obviously, I gotta mention him for like should have mentioned him first. Antonio Gibson. Yeah, Jamie McKissick's still they there. They retained they him. Yeah. Like, but uh, where did you see? Oh, here we go. I'm oh, sorry. You can go ahead. Yeah, they get Willis and then get – there's a lot of receivers in this draft. Like, you can grab a receiver and it's like, I don't know if they have – no, they traded a third for Wentz, right? Yeah. So, they still have a second pick. You can still – and it's pretty high. You can still get an early second round receiver. Yeah. And just start – like – they're, they don't want to rebuild. They still have a good defense. Like, mm -hmm. Why not have Willis take the job at like week eight? Or maybe if he needs a red shirt the year, then you can do that and mm -hmm. reevaluate. Probably just let go of Wentz. And then your future starts now. Yeah. So I like him at the Commanders. The Commanders make sense. I don't um, like their ownership, but. I just don't think they. I just don't think they're gonna do it because they just got Wentz. Like I think that they might wait a year and see what they have in Wentz before they want to make a decision about the future. You know what I mean? I think Malik Willis might go to uh, the Detroit Lions, who have the 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 thirty uh, second pick, and they have what the second pick. Um, yeah. I think there's a chance yeah. that. Um, let me get back to this. I think there's a chance that. They trade those two picks. They move back from two to, I don't know where, somewhere around in the teens or 20s or so. You know what I mean? Get, pick up another pick. Maybe not even trade that second, first round pick. But either way, take Malik Willis there. I think Detroit might take Malik, Malik mm -hmm. Willis. That's my best guess. I have him sit behind Goff. And Goff's one of those sports who we were saying. He's been to the Super Bowl. He had success in Los Angeles. You know what I mean? So. Oh. You got a good running back there. You yep. got St. Brown, who's had a good rookie, really good rookie year. Yeah, good so potential. It's promising there. They yep. still probably a couple of weapons short. They have Hawkins in there, deal. too. You're right. <laughs> Didn't even mention him. But <clears throat> a couple boundary receivers short. Mm -hmm. They have um, they yeah, drafted Panay uh, Suell last year, so they have a good offensive yeah. lineman. We yeah, obviously they have, need more, but they have uh, Ragnow, the center. I think mm -hmm. he's made a Pro Bowl before. Yeah. So they have good pieces on the line. So I mean, if they want to accelerate that process, not accelerate because you got a quarterback for five years. So ideally, you could build throughout that time. And like, <clears throat> I'm not saying Josh Allen's an apples to apples comparison, but there's things that you see. There's similarities with Willis, like, his throws on the run and how he could throw it running, like, 60 yards and his – most of them are accurate. Mm -hmm. So – Yeah. And he wasn't good early on. Like, he kind of needed his reps. Yeah. But, yeah, so Malik Willis – so what did you say? Where do you think he's going to go? You think Detroit's going to be a good place for him? Uh, yeah, that's a more realistic situation. 
Yeah. Because like you said, with Commanders, they got Wentz, which yeah. that can't be an exciting long-term option. Mm. But you already spent the resource to get them. So it kind of is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's, uh, we, got another, we got another guy to talk about here. We got Desmond Ritter, right, from Cincinnati. He's a guy that's been yeah. moving up the boards a little bit. He's, I've seen places now where he's going in the first round. And um, even, like, earlier on. And one place I've seen is Seattle even uh, taking him. But so Desmond Ritter, Cincinnati, is six foot three. Um, he's got good timing, quick release. He's good at reading defenses. He can adjust, and he played in a, a pro style offense at Cincinnati. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but he's, he's not the, accurate. The fastest QB uh, that ran. Yeah, that ran a forty. Um, but he is not accurate at all, though. <laughs> He's got a good. He's got a good completion percentage, but I think that that, that is uh, irrelevant. It's because, inflated with screens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. But uh, what did I just see? Uh, oh, he makes terrible throws. Some of the throws he makes are just terrible. You know what I mean? Like I've seen and, a few um, blunders in this tape. Yeah, bad ones. Um, but he, uh, but he does have a lot of good things. Like I was saying, he's good at reading the defense, and he can adjust mid-play. You know what I mean? And he makes a good decisions, what, like whether to pass or run or what's he going to do. But the, the, like I was saying, the problem is when he chooses to pass it, it's fucking <laughs> sometimes not very good. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think that he's another player like Malik Willis that may – be drafted early, hmm. but might need to sit behind a guy. You know what I mean? Might need yeah, to get... absorb the NFL system. Exactly. Like the pro style offense. Yeah. Kind of. Like he needs some time in the workshop. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, he's a, I mean, I'm not going to compare him to Josh Allen, but like I said, D. Allen came in his rookie year. It was like 52% completion. Yep. So Yeah, he had terrible completion percentage. That's like – and then when he got together – I don't know if Dave Ball was there his rookie year. Uh-huh. But when they got the right – they figured out the offense to put him in most success or put him in position to be successful, and they really took off. Mm-hmm. So another – I mean, ideally, every player wants to be in a good system. But some players need it more than others. Like we mentioned Pickett. You can kind of drop him in most places and he'll adapt. Yeah. Because he is more professional. Mm-hmm. But with Ritter, he needs, like, if San Fran didn't have Lance, like, if he was that in would the be a good spot. system where he, they could use the athleticism and then give him – like scheduled throws, or at least the receivers are going to be open. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I think might be a good place for him? I don't know what draft pick they have. Let me look right now, but it's the Colts might be a good winning spot for him. Maybe sit behind Matt Ryan for a little, even if it's like a mm-hmm. couple of years. You know what I mean? Because yeah, Matt Ryan's probably got, I don't know, maybe one good year. And then maybe yeah, two. maybe no, maybe no good years. <laughs> I don't know what pick they have. I don't see that. I mean, they must have traded them all. What is the Colts' first pick? The second round pick? I mean, yeah, it's realistic that he could go in the second round. I've seen Seattle. I think that that's crazy. You know what I mean? Oh, here we go. Colts, Colts have the forty second pick, a second round pick. Um, yeah, that's not bad. That's that's realistic. That's like early right? on in the second. You know, so that's my that would be my best guess. I should write this down because what if we nail this? Yeah. We're gonna do we're gonna do a mock draft before, like when we're closer to the draft, you know. Yeah. But so, um, I forget what there's I still said. some trades to be had too because, like, the Eagles yeah. and Saints traded, and that's like yeah, a that's month out of the draft. Mm-hmm. So as we get closer, team shuffle. Like we still haven't had a Baker Mayfield decision. Or exactly. a Jimmy G decision, that's probably going to affect the second round. Uh, it's uh, ideally. Mm-hmm. But, um, I like that Colts pick. 
Yeah. I uh, I didn't have a pick lined up, but I wish the Saints had Sean Payton and he went there because I don't know what they're what it's going to look like. But yeah. they've had a decade and they've had like a decade of success and high level offense. Mm. So, I mean, last year was the first year they kind of obviously first post Drew Brees year and then. But they, the Jameis Winston getting hurt killed them. He looked, he did look good. They started off pretty good. And then like early on, ACL or like close, what did he play, six games? Yeah, they were like five and one. Yeah, like he was setting it on fire. <laughs> yeah. He was eating W's is what he's doing. So they retained him, but at a reasonable number where <laughs> at a reasonable number <laughs> where it's palatable, you could still draft another quarterback. Yeah. And uh I think if he went there, I mean, granted, I wish they had Peyton, because nah. you have a new quarterback or a young quarterback. He's yeah. kind of like the ideal, obviously. But I, I still would like him to go there. Yeah. I think he would have a good opportunity. They get another receiver in the later rounds. And they could really build on. They already got AK, Kamara, mm-hmm. and hopefully Michael Thomas is something. Maybe full play, maybe. Maybe he's a trade asset at the very least. Yeah, maybe. Make sure he drafts. I think – and the Saints never rebuild. Like, no. Nah. So I think you get a quarterback. Maybe he sits behind Jameis for a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You put him in the mix. Yeah. So I put that as my fit. The Saints. Sure. Yeah. I thought that too. They drafted Ian Book last year in the second round. Um, yeah, but, but it was that. Me. I, you know what I mean? He didn't inspire me. No, nah, I didn't want draft that great really or, like, or when he no. played. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so another guy, another guy that's in this draft, Matt Corral, Ole Miss, six foot one. Uh, he does not throw the ball deep at all. He likes to throw nice screens, slants, short passes all day long. Um, you know what he means? And he's good, more of a game manager. And uh, Yeah, is he, he's close. I wouldn't call him Baker because it's, like, not a great <laughs> – not a, I wouldn't say it's an insult nor a compliment, but mm-hmm. I think yeah, there's shades of Baker in the mix. Yeah. Because he um, kind of needs I, to be, like, on time, on schedule. Mm-hmm. And also, you can't – you don't have those double moves 40 yards down the field. So, yeah. Or that offense, they knew to work around, obviously, their quarterback in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. When you're looking at his tape too, like and he like there is like well he has long completions, but it's like the receivers. He had pretty good receivers that would like shake for uh, the defensive back out of his shoes. You know what I mean? And then get the like be wide open. Um, uh, but he's a good. He's a, he's a decent runner, right? He, uh, but I wrote down here he runs too much sometimes. You know what I mean? And. Uh, I just don't see him being very good in the NFL. I don't. He's not going to project, in my opinion. He'll, he may stick around. I think he's going to be probably second round, third round pick, um, career backup guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hopefully that's his floor. I'm also I'm like probably close to you and projecting out what he'll be. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen anything to be like. I've seen he's made good plays, but I haven't been like, oh wow, like. Like usually it's that ten yard slant that the receiver runs for a touchdown. Yeah. Or like I think in a in a lot of drafts, like he's like a fifth round pick, sixth round pick. You know what I mean? I think that because this year is kind of a light quarterback draft, there's not like real home runs that right. he looks better and, than he really is. You know what I mean? And all these guys are getting a little bump in the post post uh, NCAA season. Yeah. Because no one has any new film. Like, they're going off the film, and then they're seeing the combine, which, depending on what you do, also Mm -hmm. affects your draft stock. 
Yeah. Plus, now that that's so far removed, all they have to do is talk, and then like the people talk themselves into guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's probably so what's gonna happen with him. Like he could. Even it might be a, a, first, a run like, of like, like a few, a few years ago. I a few years ago. Years ago. There's all of a sudden a run of first round picks where like Christian Ponder goes in the first round, Jake Walker goes in the first round, EJ Manuel's in the first round. These guys have no business in the first round. <laughs> Teams got trigger happy on quarterbacks sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is not there. But, um, create the effects that like the missing out effect or fear of missing yeah. out. Exactly. Exactly. When you should have just drafted the offensive lineman. You know what I mean? <laughs> um. But, yeah, so I don't see him being very good. Um, but another guy, so our fifth guy here, Sam Howell, North Carolina. Um, uh, he's a tough guy. He can pass the ball and he can run. He breaks tackles. He can throw it in tight windows. He throws the ball deep accurately. I think he's um, better than Matt Corral. I'd rather have Sam Howell than Matt Corral. I think I um, lean that way as well. Yeah. I think he's he's got the potential to become like a, a starter in the NFL yeah. for a team if he's in the right he's position, you know. Not afraid to throw it deep. And Definitely not. He does it efficiently at that too. Yeah. Like uh, a CBS article was saying that they were talking to scouts and they think he has the best deep ball, like as far as accuracy. Oh, yeah. It's just the way it floats and it always lands in the receiver in stride. Yeah. And then there's highlights to boot if you look up this past season. Mm-hmm. But the thing that yeah. worries me is like, like Mr. Risky was a North Carolina quarterback. And then other than that, they never make it out. Like, yeah. And honestly, he was a product of the postseason hype where yeah. they were like, oh, well, Look at this he did, or like you know, like how many people are thinking of him and they kind of like talk themselves in. Like I didn't think he was going in the top like what did he go to? Like Yeah. I was thinking in the twenties. Yeah. And then maybe, sure probably went. like maybe Obviously. how it ends up in that twenty ish, maybe he ends up in the second round. But yeah. I just it's North Carolina, they don't play a Tons, tons of great defenses. <clears throat> yeah, at least as far as like players being drafted. Mm-hmm. So that's my primary concern. But he is very accurate. Likes to throw it deep. So a good offense where they they take those chances. Like, I wouldn't put him in New England. I mean, they already have Mac. But hypothetically, saying because mm-hmm. we run more of an on schedule offense and we use the middle of the field. Like, he would mm-hmm. be, like, a perfect Andy Reid or, like, even Frank Reich. They like to go downfield a lot. Yeah. So, in a, yeah, in the offense mm-hmm. catered to that talent, like, mm-hmm. he could have some success. I don't know what the ceiling is. But. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like him. I think he's good. I don't know if he'll project in the NFL. You know what I mean? But I think if you get him in the second, third round, he's worth, like, you know what I mean, giving a chance to. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? But you say about the North Carolina thing, you know, he's only 6'1", too. He's got – and that's pushing it from what I'm reading. <laughs> he's closer to six feet, you know what I mean? Six one with cleats on. You know? Yeah, exactly. Cleats, double socks. Yeah, staying on turf. <laughs> Fucking um, – but, yeah, I think he's another guy, too, that's kind of got the big bump this year because of the lack of quarterbacks, you know. That's the thing with almost all of these guys, if not all of them. I don't know. Like, I think Pickett will translate in a good situation. But then again, you can kind of throw him in any mix. And I think he'll adapt. So that's why I think he's translatable. But most of yeah. the guys, I'm, I need to see it happen. At the pro mm-hmm. level, <clears throat> yeah, just because either their competition or they haven't had like X amount of years of success, or like some of the like I didn't know much about Malik Willis until this past college season, like, 
Yeah, and how often you yeah. watch Liberty play too? You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like they're not even on TV. Yeah. I'm like, exactly. <clears throat> but yeah. So. Um. Yeah. So I think the way I got, I ranked them real quick. I got Kenny Pickett, my number one quarterback, then Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, Sam Howell, and then Matt Corral. But like you said, I think Kenny Pickett will be the best one of his class. You know. Mm-hmm. I've been saying least, Willis Willis, but then I've only been watching the highlights. When you actually watch the other, like all of it, that's when you kind of can tell. You know <laughs> what I mean? You can watch highlights all day. You think everyone's great, you know? Yeah, you got to watch like a whole, like, you watch whole game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, so that's probably all we got for this show here. Good yeah, quarterback draft good show. Coverage. Yeah. So, uh, well, next week, how will we go with running backs next week? How's that sound? Yeah, go running backs. So there's a lot. There's a lot in this class. There is. Like I like Brees Hall. I like James yeah. Cook. Yeah. Good. There's guys. Kenneth you Walker. Get. There's some good. There's some good running backs. Yeah. There's some that are good, and they probably will go in the fifth round, sixth round. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can get a potential starter like Elijah Mitchell in the sixth round. Yeah. Like. To, just because of the position, it gets overlooked, and you can find gems like that. Yeah, definitely. But we'll save all our running back talk mm-hmm. for the running back show. Um, we are probably – yeah, we'll wrap it up here. And, uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Sure. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Go to kcdsports.com. Watch Briefcase Breaks. We've opened – Sports cards, have a grand time, me and Pat Eby. And uh, yeah, hopefully Jimmy's okay down in uh, Hawaii. We call him Maui Jim, mm-hmm. right? He's always in Hawaii. Yeah, he goes you know? postal for like three days and to a week <laughs> at a time. And then, yeah, but uh, check it's in. a different time zone, you know what I mean? So who knows? Probably it could be midnight there for all I know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so thanks for tuning in, everyone. Right, we'll see you stuff. next time. Y'all be sweet. Peace. Cut.